So in this video, we're going to be talking about some uh, basic counting rules in probability. Now remember that the uh, probability of an event can be computed by taking the number of ways the event occurs divided by the total number of outcomes. Now this formula tells us that we need to be able to be able to count to do probability. So uh, you can ask yourself a question, do I know how to count? If the answer to that question is yes, you can move on to the, the next uh, topic. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. Right? Now, in theory, we should be able to list all the outcomes of an experiment. Should be able to list all outcomes of an experiment and compute probability of uh, events of interest. Let's do uh, let's do an uh, an example. Suppose we have an experiment where we flip a coin three times. Okay. And we want to find the probability that we get exactly one hit. Now, this formula from up here tells us that the probability of getting exactly one hit is equal to the number of ways we get exactly one hit. So the number of ways of getting exactly one hit divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Okay. Uh, is the total number of possible outcomes when we flip uh, the coin three times. Okay. So this is a, a fairly uh, simple problem where we are we are able to list the outcomes. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's first note that an outcome of this experiment has the form x1, x2, x3, where xi is either head or tail, right? So x1 is what you get when you flip the coin the first time, x2 is what you get when you flip the coin the second time, and x3 is what you get when you flip the coin the third time. So let's go ahead and, and list the outcomes of this experiment. Let's say I have um, the I have the following table. I have the number of heads and I have uh, the sample points, the relevant sample points. So we're flipping the coin three times. Right? The number of heads 
from this experiment can range from 0 to 3. In other words, there's a probability there's a possibility that we get zero head. Right? So everything turns out to be tail. Um, there's a possibility that we get one head out of the, the three flips. Uh, we can get two heads out of the three flips, and then we can get all three heads. Now, when we get zero head, there's only one way that can happen, which is tail, tail, tail. Right. When we want to know the, uh, the outcomes associated with getting one head, we're going to have head, tail, 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 head, tail, and then tail, tail, head. When it comes to getting two heads, we can have tail, head, 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 tail, head, and then head, head, tail. Okay. And then when it comes to three heads, there's only one way that can happen, which is Head, head, head. And so according to um, this table, we have a total of eight possible outcomes. And so the probability of getting exactly one head It's going to be equal to the number of ways we can we get one head divided by the total number of outcomes. And there are three ways we can get exactly one head. Right? And so this is going to be 3 over 8. Again, this is a, a fairly simple problem. right? And it should be obvious to you that as the experiment becomes more complicated, Listing out the outcomes is not only time-consuming, but it's also easy for us to make mistakes. And so hopefully we should be able to come up with another way to uh, determine the number of outcomes. And that leads us to the counting rules. Let's look at the... Um, so there are three basic counting rules in uh, probability. I'm just going to teach you one and then introduce you to the other two or or mention the other two. The one counting rule that we're going to be uh, focusing on is what's known as the multi step experiment counting rule. So this counting rule says that the number of outcomes of an experiment involving k steps is equal to n sub 1 times n sub 2 times n sub 3 times all the way to n sub k right? where n sub i is the number of outcomes of step i. So to understand uh, this formula, uh, let's look at the, a few examples. The first example we're going to be looking at is the uh, coin flipping example. So suppose that we flip a coin three times. Okay. 
we want to know what the uh, possible number of outcomes is. So what's the total number of possible outcomes? Now, let's think of this problem as a three-step experiment. So think of this as a three-step experiment. Okay. In the first step, you flip the coin the first time. Right, so you flip coin. In the second step, you flip the coin again. So flip coin. And then in the last step, you flip the coin. Okay. Now when you flip a coin in the first step, there are two possible outcomes. Right? You either get head or tail. In the second step, you flip the same coin so you still have two outcomes and then you have two outcomes for the last step as well and so the multi-step experiment counting rule tells us that the total number of outcomes is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 which is equal to 8 Let's go back to the example we uh, we did prior to talking about this, right? So let's go back here. Here we have an experiment where we flip the coin three times. And by listing out the outcomes, we said there were eight possible outcomes. Here is the same experiment, right? And then using the formula, we get uh, the total number of outcomes of 8. So the formula works. Let's try uh, another example. Suppose you're at an, uh, an ice cream store and they have two types of cones. You have um, pretzel cones which I'm gonna de I'm gonna de denote uh, P and they have waffle cone okay. or W and then uh, when it comes to ice cream they have uh, three flavors right, so three ice cream flavors they have um, chocolate C they have vanilla V and they have strawberry S so CVS uh, not a sponsor of me or this lecture but maybe somebody can go tell them And uh, in order to uh, to pick an ice cream, so an ice cream consists of a, a cone and a flavor. Right? So you need to pick a cone and a flavor. Okay. What is the total number? of different types of ice cream you can get okay 
So how, how do we do uh, this problem? Let's think of this as a two-step experiment. So think of this as a two-step experiment. Right. In step one, you pick uh, a type of cone. So pick cone type. And then in step two, you pick a flavor. Now for step one, you have two possible cone types. So the number of possible outcomes for the, the first step is two. And then uh, when it comes to flavor, you have th three flavors to choose from. So the total number of outcomes for the second step is three. And so the total number of different ice cream types is going to be two times three, which gives you six. Again, this is a simple, a fairly simple problem. So we can, uh, we can confirm whether the formula actually works. Suppose you go into the ice cream store and you pick uh, pretzel cones. You can pair it with chocolate, you can pair it with uh, vanilla, or you can pair it with strawberry. So that gives you uh, three types of ice cream. Suppose you pick waffle cone instead. Okay. Again, you can pair it with chocolate, you can pair it with vanilla, and you can pair it with uh, strawberry. That gives you another three types of ice cream. And so the total number of different ice cream types is going to be three plus three, which is six. So you get the same answer using the formula and uh, listing the outcomes. So in this video, we uh, talked about why we need to know how to count in order to do probability. Um, and I introduced you to the first counting rule, which is known as the multi-step ca experiment counting rule. We looked at uh, a couple of examples and we showed that uh, by listing the outcomes that the formula actually works. Now, one extra thing that I want to note, which is not super important, but still. If you read the book, the textbook, and if you read other books, they may have different names for, the, uh, for this counting rule, but the idea is the same, right? I just chose this um, this name because I saw it in, in a book that I liked but there are different names for the same rule.